Everybody. And in today's video, what is this display about? Well, what I'm going to show you is how metering modes affect your scene. So for this demonstration, I have my standard four studio light set up. Lighting is pretty even in here. We have a range of tones from what's fairly dark here to what's fairly light in different places and some mid tones. So there are three basic types of metering. And what they affect is how much of the scene is metered. So what you're seeing in this video right now, that's the whole scene. The first metering mode, sometimes called matrix averaging. Matrix, by the way, is just super fancy averaging. Those look at the entire scene and they weight them initially, the entire scene evenly, in terms of calculating a meter reading. So the goal of a light meter when you use averaging or matrix metering is to look at the scene and say what settings are needed to turn this scene into a flat gray. So basically right now, as I'm recording this, I'm set at 640 ISO. My aperture is F35 and the camera is recording at one four hundredth of a second. And that's what the camera says is needed because it's metering off the entire scene right now to turn this entire scene a flat gray. And in doing that, you can see we have nice dark tones here and here, pretty good light tones over here, good mid-tones and color rendition as well. And so the meter is doing its job. The second metering mode is what's called center-weighted metering. And in center-weighted, there's an area in the center of the frame about like this that the camera is going to look at and say, this is going to provide the majority of the metering air data. Some manufacturers use 75%, 25, 60, 40 for others. But what that means is that in this area, that large number, either 75% or 60% of the metering data comes from this area and the balance comes from the periphery. So let's see what that looks like. So everything is the same, except that I've just changed to center weighted metering on my Sony a7S II and my shutter speed has changed from 1 400th of a second to 1 640th. The reason is because there is so much of a light space here in the center of the frame that this is this area is biasing the meter reading to be a little bit faster to try to make this area a slightly darker tone that's a little bit closer to gray. The third metering mode is called spot metering, and that's where you take a very small area in the center of the frame and it accounts for 100% of the metering data. So spot metering in some advanced cameras, the spot can be linked to, to your autofocus point and things like that. All of that's fine and dandy. The point of spot metering is that wherever that spot is, whether it's here or your autofocus says it needs to be here, that's 100% of the metering data. So let's see what spot metering does. So here I've switched to spot metering and now the shutter speed, all other settings being the same is one eight hundredth of a second because this area is so light. So now I'm going to show you the power of spot metering because if we grab an 18% gray card and we put it in the spot right there, we can see what happens to the rest of the frame. It becomes lighter because the camera in order to try to make this gray, which it's doing right now, and you can tell that by looking at it, this gray is a little bit darker than my tabletop, has changed the shutter speed from 1 800th to 1 320th. That's one and a third stops more light being received by the camera for each frame of this video than previously. Well, okay, so what happens if we have something very bright in the center of the frame? You can see what just happened. The bright area is the, the camera adjusts so that the bright area becomes neutral and then everything else becomes darker. Oh boy. If we put something white in the center here, you can see everything else has gotten even darker. And what's happened is that the camera has now changed the shutter speed to one one thousandth of a second. So going from gray, the mid-tone gray, to white has changed our shutter speed from one three twentieth to one one thousandth of a second. And you can see how much darker everything else has gotten. Well, what if we go the other way? 
Oh, oh, that's almost too bright, isn't it? We've gone from one one thousandth of a second to one one hundredth of a second for each frame. And you can see here how all of the dark tones now are being really popped out. The, the whites are really overblown. And that's because, again, 100% of the metering data is coming from this very dark patch right in the center right here. And the camera is trying to make this gray. And you might be able to see that it's kind of a gray color, what, what you're looking at right now. Or at least it isn't dark black, like it's supposed to be. So spot metering does a really good job of explaining the way that a light meter works. Because when we just put our three-tone cards right in that center spot, you can see immediately how the shadows and the highlights and the exposure are adjusted to make that, that area in the center spot gray. So I'm back now to full scene metering. And and you can see that even as I move my hands, there's not a whole lot, in fact, there's no adjustment, I'm looking at the settings right now, going on with the camera. Because the larger the metering area, the more even your exposure is going to be for changes. So what does that mean for practical use? If you're going to be shooting stills, if you're outside in daylight, using your standard full scene metering is going to be pretty reliable. Center weighted is very good for things like portraits. And if you have a portrait and you think about taking a picture of the person's face right here in the middle and you have your center weighted metering on, then yes, there will be some meter reading uh, information from the perimeter of the image, but the majority of it will come from that person's face and you can get a good exposure off of their face. Now, the exceptions to that are is if you're photographing somebody who is super pale, or if you're photographing somebody who has very dark skin, then what's going to happen is that the center-weighted metering is going to bias to adjust their skin tone in a way that may or may not look uh, natural. However, with digital, you can easily correct any of those differences in post. Then spot metering you can use for very accurate readings. So for instance, I can tell you right now that the, the lizard skin on this Leica is pretty close to neutral gray. And we can kind of verify that with our neutral gray card. It's, it's close. So if you were looking at this scene and you said, oh boy, I want to make sure that I get all of these tones really correct, you could take a spot meter reading off of the lizard skin, save those settings in memory or dial, dial them in manually, and then you would have a proper meter reading for this whole scene. You can apply that to landscapes or buildings, cityscapes, seascapes, portraits also. Any type of photography you're doing, if you have a specific thing that you want to have be your middle tone, you can use your spot meter to make that your middle tone. Okay, this is, this is great, but what if, what if we really want to highlight the detail on this leather cover here? Well, we take a spot meter reading off of that. It's going to make the scene much, much brighter. But then we can dial the settings back a little bit, maybe make this just a hair brighter than it should be. And then we can see things like the cracks and the crevices and the stitching in this leather cover. And we could say we've now emphasized the way that that looks. So spot metering is the most powerful type of metering because it allows you as a photographer to say this tone right here, this gray, this brown, this gray, this red, this green, that's going to be the middle tone for my image. Everything else is going to fall into place. The brights will be even brighter. The darks will be, well, even brighter. There's going to be nothing that is a completely detailless shadow. There will be blown out highlights or vice versa. I want, I want this very bright white silver here. The, the sil brightest part of the scene, I want this silver to be the middle tone. This will be much darker. So the metering modes are designed for different purposes, right? The, the, the full scene metering is a really good general everyday use. I don't want to think too much about exactly what's in my composition metering mode. Center weighted is really good if you're doing a lot of center framed subjects like portraits specifically it really are very good. Center weight is also very good for general walk around photography, especially if you have older lenses that really, really vignette your images heavily. And then spot is where you as the photographer can take the most control 
over your photography by telling the camera exactly what you want your exposure to be and then dialing in or remembering the settings before recomposing your image. Thank you everyone very much and I'll see you in the next tips video. Thank you everyone for watching. If this video was helpful and useful to you, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track and that I'm producing and creating content which is helpful to you. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about responding every couple of days and answering whatever questions you have to the best of my ability. If you'd like to subscribe to find out when I have more videos about how to use cameras, photographic techniques, or the best practices for the tools of the trade, by all means, please subscribe and check that notifications bell to be alerted when new content arrives. And one last thing, thank you everyone very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next videos.